function right here. And so here we're going to be doing the law of cosines. So the nice thing about law of cosines is um, even though it's, it's a little bit more complex, uh, complicated um, in its formulation, it's always pretty formulaic, right? It, 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 there's no ambiguous case, so we have to like stress our brains about. Okay, so let's let's go into it. And so let's, right, can I zoom on in? Thank you. All right, so we're going to be doing law of cosines. So law of cosines say the following. A, a squared, so given our ABC triangle, um, A squared plus B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. And so here, given this information, we can use these formulas here to achieve everything else that we didn't know. And so in this case, if we know, um, and, the, and remember, let's go way back, way back here. Remember what our options were. So we know two sides and the included angle is a way of using law of cosines, or if we know all three sides. And we'll do each, we'll do each of these. Um, on the notes for, for this section, I followed something from the book, and then after doing a practice run, I decided it was too rough. And so when we get to that word problem, I'm just going to write skip. You can write skip. If you want to, you can go through it, but it just gets... It gets a little bit hairier than um, something we should uh, than something we'll not do in a live class when we can't just directly answer ask me questions about it, and so I decided to skip it for now. Um, and they don't put anything that awful on the midterm or the final, and I'll make sure I don't put anything like that on the on the t exam. I'll have to double check I didn't, but I'll well, I'll check it. Um, all right, so let's go through it. <laughs> All right, so let's say, so when you, so in this case, we know each of the sides of the triangle. So this is an SSS, right? So we know side, side, side. So here, let's just go ahead and do it. So here, I have my triangle, we have our A, we have our B, we have our cursive C. And then on the opposite side, we'll have 12. So C equals to 12. We'll have B equals to 8. And we have A equals to 5. And so what we're looking for here is just all the angles. To solve this triangle, we're looking for all the angles. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, I can resolve this, so I can resolve, let's just start here. I can resolve for cosine of a. Cosine of a is equal to b squared plus c squared um, minus a squared all over uh, 2bc. And so here I'm just resolving this for this. Um, your book actually has these listed out as separate, um, and that's fine. If you want to write this all down as a separate set, that's fine. Because you can just, here I'm just minusing, here I'm going to minus, I'll move this over. So I'll just switch the sign, so this will be minus a, uh, minus b squared, minus c squared, plus c. Move that over, so I'll have b squared plus c squared minus a squared, and then I'll divide out by the 2bc, and that's what I get. And so it's easy to solve for it. All right, so once I have this, I can just plug in the numbers. So b squared is 8 squared. c squared is 12 squared. Uh, a squared is minus, uh, would be minus 5 squared. And remember, minus 5 squared is different than the negative. This is not equal to this, OK? Because this gives you minus 25. This gives you positive 25. So remember. This is written correctly as it is here. And we're going to divide by 2 times 8 times 12, because that's what B and C are. And so that's going to roughly equal, so this equals 183 over 92, or 192. I'm just going to take the in, this is less than 1, so I'll just take the inverse cosine of that, so the arc cosine of 183 over 90, 192, and I get it approximately equal to 0. Point 0. Oh, hold on. Grab the right number. I get that approximately equal to 18 degrees. All right, so I have this about 18 degrees. So I know one. So sine of a is roughly 18 degrees. So what's the next one? The next one here is um, Cosine of b. So let's just do the same thing for cosine of b. Cosine of b is equal to, and now we're just going to, and so b goes here, and a goes here and here. Same thing, same concept. Let's, so let's just go ahead and crunch through the numbers. So it'll be 5 squared, because that's what, oh, let me write it down. Let me write it down so I don't confuse you. a squared 
plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. And so here we'll have that. So a squared in this case is 5 squared plus 12 squared. Make this look more like a 5. 5 squared plus 12 squared minus 8 squared all over 2 times 5 times 12. And so that's approximately equal to 0 0.875. We take the inverse cosine of that, so inverse cosine of 0 0.875. And that's roughly, it's roughly equal to 29 degrees. Okay. Um, that's a roughly equal to 29 degrees. Once we have that, we can just take 180 minus 29 minus 18, and I get, I'll get 133 degrees, and there we go. So this would be roughly 29 degrees, and this would be roughly 133 degrees. Now, could you use the other way to solve for it? Sure. But it's not necessary. So it's not necessary at all. All right. So let's go to the next one. So let's solve this triangle. So on this one, if I leave the airport flying this after one hour makes a course correction after this, this all gets really confusing. It's not, it's just so much. And so in this case, we're gonna skip this, right? We're gonna skip this. And if I see it on, if, if I see it on the exam, since I've already posted the exam for you guys to do, I'll switch it to extra credit. If it's not on the exam, it won't be worth anything. And if I'm still using these videos after for another term, which I almost guarantee I will be. Um, what I say about exams and tests might be null and void because it's class specific, but the notes, the following notes will do that. And I'll, I'll make sure to do, do, I'll make sure to announce it in campus what I'm doing if I reuse this, which I probably will. I'll spend a lot of time on these. <laughs> All right, so side note aside, let's do this one. Okay. All right. And so what do we got here? Um, so here we have a triangle. We have a side. Um, so I know two sides and the angle between it. So here I know what B is. And so B is equal to 10.5. I know what C is here. So C is equal to 18. I know the angle between it, which is 46.5 degrees. So that's A. So I have side, angle, side. And so this is solved using law of cosines because I do not know the ratio of, I don't know the ratio of any side to any angle. I don't know that. I don't know that ratio. So I cannot use law of sines, but we can use law of cosines. So going back to our very our equation here, we're going to be using this to solve for A. Because I know what cosine of A is. I know what B and C are, right? And so now I can just write A the square A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. And notice I'm just going to just take the square root of both sides, and I don't need to write about plus or minus because I don't have negative sides. And so here I just take the square root of both sides, so I get A. So let's just plug in those values. So I have the square root of 105, or not 105, but 10.5 10 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 10.5, 18 cosine of the angle, which is 46.5. Five. I crunch this all through a calculator. Do not do this by hand, right? <laughs> crunch this all through a calculator, and I get the following. So I get 13.2. So I know what A is. So that's, and what did I want to find here? I need to find A, which was 13.2. I need to find the angle B and the angle C. Okay, using the cursive C, which I did not draw well. <laughs> but that's okay. So. Let's, and so here, I now can use the law of cosine. So I can say cosine of B, we can use the law of cosines. We can also use law of sines at this point. Why? Because I know what, I know what this is, right? I know what this is. And then here you can just use the law of sine, get an angle, and go for it. But we also can use law of cosines. And the reason we might want to use law of cosines, even though it's a little bit more complicated, is that you don't have an any and ambiguousness, right? And so it removes the ambiguousness. So it either works or it doesn't, right? So cosine of b equals to 13.2 minus 18 squared. Oops, let me write in what these are. 
So cosine of b. So once again, we can solve this for cosine of b. And when we do that, we'll get the following. So it would be cosine of b. And so what is that? That would be um, a squared plus, oops, not b, c squared minus b squared all over 2ac, as we got last time. So we crunch through those numbers. We're going to get 13.2 squared. We're going to get minus 18 squared, or plus 18 squared, sorry, minus 10.5 squared all over 2 times 13.2 times 18. And we get this um, to be approximately equal uh, 0 0.816. Oops, that's not legible to you guys. So this is approximately equal to 0 0.816. 816. We take the arc cosine of that, so the arc cosine of 0 0.816 is equal to uh, 35 degrees, or 35.3 degrees, and that's of course equal to, oops, B, because that's what we solved for, so we have 35.3 degrees, this is also in degrees, and so we just take 180 to solve the last one. I mean, you could you could crunch it through it the other way, but I might as well just use the most simplest method for you. All right, so 46.5 minus 35.3, and that's going to be roughly equal to 98.2, so we just put in 98.2, and we've solved this triangle. Okay, so we know all the angles and all this. All right. Once again, we're going to skip this. Uh, this ends up being a complicated triangle. Um, let me go over to the first five seconds of it and then explain why I'm not doing it. Because um, what it means, what this means is, oops, let me see if I can just draw what's going on here. What this means is I'm flying north, uh, northeast, so 20 northeast, and so here I'm going, this is 20 degrees, right? And then at some point B, I'm going to make a correction. I'm going to go f make this 40 degrees, and then... I'm going to end up at point C, and the and this one you're going to try to figure out what C equals. It just gets a little bit hectic, right? Because then you have to figure out how do I get to this angle, and what's this one, and this one, and this one, and it ends up being more complicated for an introduction. Okay. So once again, if you see this on the exam, it'll be extra credit. If you see it on homework, it's just a really hard homework problem. Okay. Since you get infinite tries and you can ask all your friends. Um, I'm not worried about it on the homework. I'm happy for you to work through something. But on the exam, if you see it, it'll be extra credit. If you don't see it, it means I removed it. Or it wasn't there in the first place. I don't remember, and I don't want to rewrite, uh, remake the video right now, just to be honest with you guys. So let's just do the very last page of this, and we'll talk about Heron's form. So Heron's form is this wonderful formula, um, which if you know all the sides of a, of a triangle, you can say what the... Uh, you can figure out what the area is. So no matter how weird it looks, right, you can figure out what the area is. And so here, a businessman wishes to buy. So what it is is you find what they call the semi-perimeter, which is half your perimeter. Right? So you just add up your perimeter and divide by 2. That's your semi-perimeter. In a triangle, this is going to be longer than any of the sides. Um, and you just take the square root of the seminary perimeter, and then that minus A, that minus B, that minus C, and it's actually a lot simpler than it, it comes out to be. So let me explain how this works. So this is man, an, an example of a triangle. So here we have uh, a work problem. So a businessman wishes to buy a triangle lot in a busy downtown location. See a figure. There's no figure right now. Um, usually I post it in class and show it to you guys, but since I'm posting this on YouTube, I'm not allowed to show stuff in the books. That's breaking rules. So, um, the lot French is uh, three adjacent streets. So here we just have a triangle with the streets of 125, 280, and 315. And I want to figure out what is the area of this. Well, I can just use this formula. And so the first thing we want to do is find out the semi perimeter. So we add up half, and then we just add up each of the sides. So 125 plus 315. Oops. Don't close the parentheses quite yet, plus 280. Well, half of all this is 360. And so the area of this lot is just equal to 
but S is 360, so it would be 360. 360 minus one side, so we'll just say 125. 360 minus the other side, 360 minus another side, which is, say, 315. 360 minus the last side. I should not write so big. 360 minus the last side, which is 280. All right, so we have all this. We just crunch this through a calculator. And since this is all in feet, we'll, uh, we'll get 17,451.6 feet squared. Since this is an area, we'll add the feet squared. And since it's a word problem, we should say the lot size is roughly 17,451.6 feet squared. Okay, and that's the end of this. So, in my opinion, even though the formulas for the law of cosine is more complicated, it ends up, ends up being easier than the law of sines, um, since you don't, there's not, there's less ambiguity about it. If you can crunch the law of cosines, do it. And this Heron's formula is a wonderful uh, way of just, if you know the size of a triangle, you can just figure out what the size is. Now, how this all works is a little bit more complicated to prove, but just trust the formula. And that's it. That's the end of these notes. And this is the end of Chapter 6, and you'll be taking the Chapter 6. Um, and for those who are taking the flip class uh, remotely and the online courses, you'll be taking Chapter 6 assessment. At the end of this, um, for the if it, if I'm using reusing this, eh, you'll find out when you find out. <laughs> okay. All right. So, good luck, guys. Take care.